Would you pray with me? Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. One of the most difficult things that any Christian faces is the challenge to allow his or her heart to be opened to share not only with the Lord and to be affected and changed and transformed by the Lord, but also to allow their hearts to be opened in order that they might do as Jesus has commanded us to love the Lord our God with everything that we have and to love our neighbors as ourselves. All too often in our world today, I'm concerned that those of us in the church are looking less and less like the church and more and more like the world around us. This is something that has been a theme of my preaching now for practically 15 years. And there's a need for us to examine this because from the very beginning, from the very beginning, of God's interaction with his chosen people, the, the Old Testament church, and then with his interaction with the New Testament church, the Lord has been very concerned that we not look like the world around us, that we do things according to his economy, his way of thinking, his way of putting priorities in place, rather than the way that is easiest for us, which would be, ironically, the way of the world. The most difficult thing that a Christian will ever face is the call to open up his or her heart and to love sacrificially. Yet even as the Lord has called us to be holy and perfect as he is holy, and even as he has given us the example of sacrificial love in the work and ministry, the death and resurrection of Jesus, we are called to love sacrificially even when we don't want to. Hence the title of the message this morning, Unwanted. The sacrifice of sacrificial love. It would seem that the more prosperous we become, the less we are wanting to sacrifice. The more we are wanting to hold to ourselves and to keep in reserve away from what the Lord is calling us to do and to be. I was driving to work, I think it was Monday morning, and I struggle sometimes with whether I should have, I got an hour long commute to work, and I struggle sometimes whether I should spend that time quietly with the Lord or listening to what's happening in the world. This particular morning, I'm glad that I was listening to what is happening in the world because I knew what scriptures I was gonna be preaching from today, and wouldn't you know it, as I listened to NPR, they had a story about some 200 and I think 22 girls in one of the India states, similar to Kentucky, uh, who are going to be renamed. Now, when they gave the teaser for this story, I thought, you know, this sounds like it's interesting. Why are they renaming these girls? What, weren't their names appropriate that they were given? What, why are they doing this? Why is the state of, and I forget the name of the state now, but why is the such and such state stepping in as the government to rename these, these children? And then I realized as I read the story, it's actually the state of Maharashtra. And there are 222 girls that when the, the Satara district, maybe like similar to a county, 
when they realized and they looked through the public rolls, they realized there were 222 girls whose names were given as Nakashi or Nakusa. That in English literally means unwanted. Can you imagine naming a child unwanted? In this case, it happens to be because these families wanted boys because boys are seen as being able to help bring, bring in income for elderly parents. Girls are seen as a tax on the family resources. Can you imagine that? Naming your beloved child unwanted. Can you imagine the Lord calling any one of his children unwanted? In our Old Testament lesson today, the Lord is speaking and he wants Israel to understand that there is nobody who is unwanted in his kingdom. There's nobody that he considers expendable. Nobody that he considers to be unworthy of his love. And so he tells Israel, I want you to remember that you were once foreigners in the land of Egypt and I set you free. I want you to remember that when you're dealing with foreigners who are in your midst, I want you to treat them the way I treated you. I want you to walk in their shoes so that you understand what it's like to not feel welcome. I want you to understand that the mandate I give is non-negotiable. There is nobody that I don't want you to reach out to with the good news of who I am. Now it's interesting, as we look at that passage, that the chapters preceding it, following the giving of the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, the chapters that precede chapter 22, where we are looking at this morning, all deal with interactions between people. And then this little passage that we're reading from this morning happens to be a bridge. It's a bridge that goes from God telling Israel how they're supposed to deal with each other to how they are supposed to deal with him. Right smack dab in the center of those two issues, God says, I want you to love sacrificially. I want you to extend welcome even when you don't want to do it. I want you to open your hearts and understand that as I redeemed you, I will also redeem them. St. Paul understands this. As he's writing to the church at Thessalonica, he, he says to them, you know, we didn't come here with fancy words or trickery. We didn't come here trying to tickle your fancy or, or to try to get on the good side of the authorities. We came here to share with you the gospel of Jesus. We came here understanding that there's a likelihood that we could be persecuted as we were persecuted at Philippi. Nevertheless, we've made the choice to come because we know that Jesus calls us to love you sacrificially. And if we die in the cause of sharing the love of Jesus, then so much the better. Because the life that we have is a gift from him. The mission that we have is a gift from him. It's a reminder that even as he died on the cross, 
So we need to die to ourselves in order that we can live to him. Look with me, if you would, for just a moment at that epistle lesson. Uh, you'll find it on page... Uh, I'm actually wanting to look at page 6, the top of page 6. Looking at the beginning with verse 5. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. Just as Jesus emptied himself to come to us and not only to die, but to die on a cross, as Paul reminds us in Philippians. Just as Jesus made the choice to do that, so Paul and his companions are making the choice to follow that example. Instead, we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. Do you think for one minute that the church at Thessalonica was any more obedient to the Lord than any other church in the last 2,000 years? Do we dare to think that the church at Thessalonica didn't give Paul grief? That he might not have been frustrated as he was engaged in the task of welcoming them and, and trying to help them understand the deeper things of Christ, trying to get them to contemplate what it means to be a Christian. Nevertheless, he makes a point of saying, we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, not only their preaching, listen to this now, but also our own selves. Willing to sacrifice comfort and being with their own families and doing what they want to do, they wanted to offer themselves up as a bridge, a bridge of sacrificial love so that this new church could come to know Jesus Christ more deeply. Why? Because you have become very dear to us. Because you mean something to us. Because you mean something to Jesus. Because he died for you just as he died for us. And you can have life just as he's given life to us. So we know that we're called to love sacrificially and we know that we have a tendency to not want sacrificial love. And, and so we tend as human beings to throw over the side any call that comes to us from the gospel to love sacrificially, especially if it's more inconvenient and especially if it doesn't have to do with our immediate lives. The Sadducees and the Pharisees had taken this to new heights. They are the descendants of the ones whom the Lord spoke to from Mount Sinai and said, this is how I want you to behave. And instead of loving sacrificially, they created hedges of protection around themselves that allowed them to separate themselves from those who were considered unclean or unwelcome or dirty. And one time after another, they try to trip Jesus up. They're trying to protect what he is trying to tear down. 
And what he is trying to tear down is their willingness to throw sacrificial love over the side in favor of selfish love. And so the Pharisees come to him, because he's already shut up the Sadducees. The Pharisees come to him and they say, Master, teacher, as if they're really reverent to him. Master, what is it? Which one is the greatest commandment of them all? Tell us. Teach us. And Jesus says, love the Lord your God with everything you have. And tied to that, love your neighbor as yourself. He has fished sacrificial love out of the depths of the sea to which it had been thrown, and he pulls it right back on board that ship. And he says to them, this is what you have to do if you're going to love the Lord your God with everything you have. You're going to have to listen to what he says, and you're going to have to act on what he says. And as you do that, you will discover what it means to be a child of the king. Then he does something. Well, he's got them sitting there. That's instructive for us. He says, what about the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said, well, he's the son of David. And, and then Jesus says, yet how can it be that he's the son of David when David calls him Lord? By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he calls him Lord. Jesus does a one-two punch. Not only does he drag sacrificial love out of the depths, the sacrificial love that they've tried to get rid of, he then says, and guess what? I and the embodiment of that anticipated love that you've been wanting. And then they shut up. They can't say anything more because he's finished the story. Beloved, we fail to love sacrificially because we fail to listen to Jesus. And to the extent that we listen to Jesus, we succeed in loving sacrificially. We're reminded in Scripture that our fruits will tell the world around us who and what we are listening to. Who and what we're paying attention to. Who and what we are putting a priority on. There are people all around us today that the world is labeling unwanted. Jesus is saying, don't you dare call them unwanted. I love them. And because I love them, you must love them. Sacrificially. As we continue to grow, as we continue to forge ahead as a new parish, we're called to do just that. We're called to sit with St. Mary of Bethany at the feet of Jesus, soaking up everything he says. Whether that's in coming to celebrate the Eucharist, whether it's in uh, daily prayer, whether morning prayer or evening prayer or both, uh, individually, and then together as a family, we are called to sit at the feet of Jesus in devotion and contemplation of everything that he is saying to us. And then we're called, as St. Mar as, as Saint Martha of Bethany has shown us, to get our act together and to put our shirt sleeves up and to get to work. I was never so proud to be a vicar of a parish as I was on Thursday night. When I laid out a suggestion 
and you all spoke what the Lord would speak and said our focus needs to be on sharing Jesus with people before we do anything else. You gave me a gut check on Thursday night. You spoke the words of Jesus to me, and I am so grateful. We've got a lot of listening to do. We've got a lot of working to do. And we've got a lot of sacrificial love to share. May it happen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and for this parish and for the work that you're trying to do in and through us. Silence our hearts before you that we might hear you. And then kindle the flame of your love within us that it might shine brightly. That we would give sacrificially to those around us. Help us to do this. We ask this in Jesus' name.